Welcome to Massive Late Fee, and now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my intrepid girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here. It is September 5th. 6th. 5th. No, 6th. <laughs> September 6th, 1997. <laughs> and it's been, you know, we've had, we've had some good times here, huh? Oh, yeah. Great times. We've had some good times, uh, everyone. <laughs> great times in the theater, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. You know what else is a great time, hmm. Carol? Three strikes for Arnold. For Arnold Schwarzenegger? Mm, good guess. He was in a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Tom Arnold. Oh. Uh-huh. Have you heard of The Tom Show? No. It's one star from Mike Duffy. Doesn't surprise me. 9 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, it's one of those weird Hollywood rules. Even the unfunny keep making money. Right. So it's one more time around the laugh track for Tom Arnold. The former Mr. Roseanne struck out on NBC with the Jackie Thomas show. He flopped on CVS with Tom, and now he's landed on the WB, one of TV's pint-sized networks, for his latest adventure in sitcom silliness, The Tom Show, in which Arnold plays a sad sack single pop trying to get his life back together after a messy divorce from his rich, famous celebrity wife. <laughs> May have been loosely inspired by Arnold's own Roseanne marital zoo, but the blandly wacky comedian contained in Sunday night's series premiere arrives straight from the chucklehead cookie cutter. He loves that term chucklehead. No, it's kind of interesting. Mike Duffy. Uh, I think the problem with Tom Arnold and Roseanne had more to do with cocaine, (laughs) allegedly, than anything else. Well, I don't. Maybe. But definitely on his part. I can't imagine I mean, alleged, her. Allegedly, definitely on his part. I can't imagine her doing cocaine, can you? Fattest cokehead in the world, Tom Arnold. He's not that fat. Eh. Um. <laughs> I mean, he's like a little chubby. He's overweight, but I wouldn't say he's it's a fat. Good, it's a good diet plan then, I guess, right? <laughs> Want to lose weight? Cocaine. Huh? Um. But speaking of cocaine, uh, we've got... So there's a a thing in the paper here. Let me tell you something. Sounds interesting. Maybe you might want to go. I don't know. But it's a a new thing. I I hadn't heard of it until I read it about it in the paper. Partygoers gather for burning of the man, it says. This is in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. Uh, Thousands of people massed in the Nevada Desert Sunday around a five-story high glowing neon sculpture known as The Man, and prepared to watch him burn. What? The 12th annual Burning Man Festival, variously described as Disneyland turned inside out, the world's wildest party, and a physical manifestation of cyberspace. What? (laughs) Was to reach his climax late Sunday when organizers set fire to the sculpture. More than 10,000 people attended the event, toting food, water, and shelter to a dried-out desert prehistoric lake bed on private land near Gerlach, Nevada, for the end of Labor Day weekend. That sounds fucked up and weird. That sounds like a cult activity. Like, who well, goes to the desert to watch something burn? Right. A giant man. Well, here's some more cult-like stuff. All were welcome, organizers said, except the intolerance. And admission was $75. <laughs> Awaiting participants in the desert was a virtual city with streets, lighting, a radio station, and daily newspapers. Weird. All thrown up in recent days and destined to be removed today, leaving the desert as blank as before their arrival. That is oh, fucking wow. weird. Very weird. Why would you do that? This international community that we create from nothing and that returns to nothing when we leave, has been liberated from nearly every context of ordinary life. Burning Man's presiding genius, Larry Harvey, said on the project's website. Consciously ritualistic, the festival aims to use such basic human needs as the attraction to fire, music, and movement 
to provide a form in which participants discover and distill what they uniquely are. I bet you it's just an orgy. Yeah. I'll bet you there's a lot of drugs there. Mm-hmm. That's what I bet. What? Is your microphone okay? Yeah, my microphone's fine. Okay. I, I dropped something. I thought it was like the plug. No, 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 no. Let me just do a little uh, maintenance there. There we go. Okay. No, I just dropped my Walkman. <laughs> but like to set up streets and newspaper and... I'm sorry, Discman. Yeah. Streets and newspapers. For just a few day event, like why? I think it's, yeah, a week or something like that. That seems weird. It seems like something only rich people would do. I do kind of get the physical manifestation of cyberspace now a little bit. Okay, why? How? Where it's because it's like a community coming together for a very brief period of time in a in an almost artificial like bubble. Yeah, because they're creating their own society within a society. Suppose I guess presumably devoid of the rules and laws of regular society for a week, and then it gets taken down. Yeah. And I guess the local authorities just tolerate it because it's only a week. <laughs> we'll let you be savage bastards for a week. It's really fucked up. You could kill someone there. It'd be fun. I, I doubt that. It's lawlessness for one week. I I've mean, decided that's what it is. <laughs> I really don't think that's the case. I think if somebody went there and never came back, there'd be questions that needed mm, answering. I don't know. Orgies, you say, though, huh? Doesn't it seem like that would be like when they're like every everyone but the intolerant? Like, what are they supposed to be tolerant of? Right. What's going on there? Yeah, I don't know. You want to check it out? No. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Okay. <laughs> you know what I don't want to check out, though? Hmm. The funeral for Princess Diana, Carol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's sad. That's obviously the big story this week. Uh, Princess Diana killed in a... Uh, car crash it's quite a shock caused by the paparazzi fucking bastards it's the paparazzi's fault oh yeah yeah you didn't know that no i just i mean i knew that attention to any of the news at all do you well i mean don't you want my genuine reactions yeah i do um no like i just thought like she was in a limo and like the driver did something stupid no no the driver the driver, I don't, I don't think did anything stupid, but she was in a limo with her, you know, Dofi Fayed, whatever his name is. I, I can't remember his name. That's, is that her boyfriend or something? Yes. Okay, yeah, I didn't right. know. And the paparazzi were like hounding them. They were like he was trying to get away from them. They were snapping pictures. They were driving fast and recklessly, Paris streets. That was stupid. And they caused the fucking accident. I mean, I I would have to say that it's both the driver and the paparazzi's fault because the driver should not be driving recklessly to get away. Like, oh, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? They're going to get our picture? Like, that's not as big of a deal as, you know, getting in a car crash and dying. I guess. It's the paparazzi's fault, though. Sure. I fucking hate them. (laughs) Quote from uh, Earl Charles Spencer, Princess Diana's brother. I always believed the press would kill her in the end. Not even I can imagine that they would take such a direct hand in her death. Mm-mm. The British Prime Minister, Tony Blair, says she was the people's princess, and that's how she will stay, how she will remain in our hearts and in our memories forever. I mean, I remember, like, when I was really little watching TV and seeing, like, her cool outfits and stuff. Like the her wedding. hats. The wedding and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a horrible tragedy that she, uh, unfortunately, died. Also, you know, her boyfriend, too, died. Uh, people don't care as much about that. I'm sorry to hear that. He people did died. die. Did the driver also die? I don't know. Isn't that, isn't that awful? I have no idea. Wow. I'm going to assume yes, but I don't know. That's, that is awful. But we know that she died. But speaking of tragedy, Carol... Oh, my Lord. We saw a movie. So, I was saying, can like... I, can I uh, say something before you, you do whatever the fuck you're going to do, Carol? Sure. Because you do this to me all the time. This is your fault. I know. That's what I was going to say. 
I was like, oh, I don't want to watch Shall We Dance. Let's watch uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, because we we did a, we talked about it. Yeah, there was a See, story about it last week. So it's kind of your fault no, because you chose no, to inform me about no. the existence of the oh movie. Oh my god! <laughs> and you should have known well, I'd want to see it. Why the filmmakers' fault for making <laughs> the movie? I don't know. I don't know what to do or say about this movie. Like it's so fucked up. Holy shit! I mean, like the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre was really disturbing. Oh yeah, it's it's. The first Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie is an actual brutal movie. Which I believe we talked about on this uh, show as well. I think we did, yes. I know we watched it. Yeah. You'd never seen it. We rented it at Blockbuster. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we talked about it. Um, Or Hollywood Video. I can't remember, but we're officially sponsored by Blockbuster. This one did... I wish. This one did a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, it was almost a remake. Almost, but not quite. Yeah, there's there was there's some differences. Definite weird differences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the first movie, the original movie, starts with a narration by John Lorquette of Nightcore Fame, before he was of Nightcore Fame. Because mm-hmm. the first movie came out in seventy four, I think. And it's creepy that and they play this this like weird sound effect while he's like reading it, like uh, you know, Ed Gain was a thing, and we based this off this. It's essentially, Basically, yeah. it's essentially what he says. <laughs> uh, but then the movie starts, and it's it's awful. You know, yeah. it's, it's brutal and everything. But the what I respect about the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and what I think uh, Toby Hooper did well with the movie, is it, the movie is like very clearly a metaphor for. The like Nixon era chaos in America with Watergate and everything. It's a deconstruction of the family unit and like traditional like fifties and sixties family values. They have like that very disturbing dinner scene mm. in in the movie, and that's like it's a traditional like Sunday family dinner, and it's a perversion of all that stuff. There are ideas behind that movie of about the political and social climate of the era that Toby Hooper was making this movie in. And this movie has none of that. No. It's a pale imitation of the first movie with none of like the political or societal barbs. And what there is is just some fucking weird ideas that they just they piled on top of it yeah yeah like i don't understand what we watched really right (laughs) like i I mean archaeologists will be debating (laughs) the meaning of this movie in years to come i mean like okay so it's prom night cool the kids get you know in an accident at the beginning though of the movie Mm -hmm. we get we get the barest of character development for yeah, any of these characters. Yeah, I don't really care about any of that. <laughs> but at the beginning of the movie, we get a close-up of Renee Zellweger's lips. Yeah. G- Mrs. Jerry Maguire <laughs> is going to prom, and she applies this red lipstick. Which looked really nice. Over and over. Yeah, and it was weird. Over again. It looked nice, but yeah, it was like way too long that she just kept putting on layer after layer. And then immediately... Takes it off. Yeah. And that could have been interesting if that was supposed to tell us anything about her character. Was the point that she purposely tries not to look beautiful? Like at a couple different points, because they're talking about how ugly she is or whatever. It's like... She is not ugly. Whatever. Come on, I've seen Empire Records. (laughs) Um, But... Like, yeah, they're trying to imply that and, like, oh, lose 30 pounds, somebody says. And it's like, from where? <laughs> that would be in her entire body mass. But um, then later one of the characters is like, well, I've seen her in PE. She's got a killer body or whatever. Right. Like, really? Like, you know, because supposedly she hides all that, right? But, okay, does that, does, that tell her, does that tell us anything about her? Is that relevant at all 
to this story? Does no. it fit into anything? I mean, I guess maybe because Leatherface wants her face. And because he's wearing the face of one of the, of the one of the people from the sequels <laughs> or were the first movie. I don't know. He's got somebody. He's got a woman's face. And at one point we see him putting on lipstick the same way she had been putting on lipstick. And again, if you want to connect things like that, you can't just do you can't just you can't just come up with an idea and be like, oh, what if we did the same shot for Leatherface? OK, and what's that about? No, it just looks cool. It's the same shot. It makes no sense. Like yeah. if, if there was a connection of character there in, if, for some reason, but there's nothing there, and it just becomes frustrating. There's nothing there for any of them. I mean, like they're talking about too. Like uh, she smokes pot, right, with her friend or whatever. I the, guess the they, guy's car, and they say that she did. They like this fucking rich. Okay, so there's two very stereotypical preppy. Captain of the football team, captain of the cheerleading squad characters, where she's looking for her boyfriend. By the way, the, the, I feel really bad for her character. She, yeah. She does nothing wrong throughout the entire movie. And she just gets shit on over and over and over. Right. Yeah, she did something bad to the director, I think. <laughs> uh, but he's making out with some other girl, and then it's basically like, oh, it's because you won't have sex with me, and you can get prostate cancer. My dad's a doctor. Yeah, it's so really it's, stupid. Yeah, it's really dumb. And she she's driving away, and the two pop out of Renee Zellweger and her boyfriend or whatever pop out of the back seat, and they're just there in the car. And he's like, oh, I know what you're doing. You're smoking pot. Who goes to just some random dude's car that you go to high school with to smoke pot? What, yeah. what the fuck? I mean, I assumed they were friends, and that's why they were in his car doing that. But they that, didn't but... act like it. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. It was all weird. And there was a girl at one point. Was that Heather? Was that the cheerleader who was talking to herself? No. Oh, yeah. That was fucked up, too. Yeah. Like, that was like her friend or something like that. It seemed like she was talking about the adults, like taking tickets, the prom. But she wasn't looking at the other character. She was looking. I thought she was schizophrenic. Yeah, that's exactly what it seemed like. She wasn't like she was not. She was talking to herself. She was delusional. That's what it seemed like. And I like I thought maybe that the 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 girl, the preppy girl, like mm-hmm. that was a figment of her imagination. <laughs> the other girl or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, wasn't explained later. Heather says how she pretends to be stupid so that people will like her and she's not and stuff. So that's why I thought, well, maybe that was her. Maybe that's what was going on because I didn't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But, so they drive out to the middle of nowhere for some reason. And they get in an accident. In central Texas. Yeah. They start driving on a back road. They're on a freeway at one point and then she just turns onto a back road. And they're like, oh, we'll turn around. There's no place to turn around. You were on a freeway. Why did you get off in the back? It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Get off at a gas station. Turn around. Get back <laughs> on the freeway, going in the opposite direction. It's not hard, right? But yeah, some guy crashes into them. I guess he was running away from I, from them. I don't know. I, didn't they know him? Who? The guy that hit them? No, they oh. didn't know each other. Okay. But he, so some young kid crashes and he gets up and he's like, oh, what's wrong or whatever. And then he just collapses. So they're going to try to find help. Yeah. And the what? The boyfriend stays there, which I didn't realize right away. Yeah. But he stays there with the other guy, the one that was in the car accident. And then preppy guy, his girlfriend and Renee Zellweger go off looking for help. So we're, I don't understand what business... That woman was supposed to be running? I don't know. Yeah, they get to this woman's thing. and It's an office of some sort. Is it like a real estate office? That was kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, I don't don't, don't know what it's supposed to be. I mean, it feels like um, it's just a a setup for her to be there then. Oh, yeah. It's the set that they had. And, I mean, at least in the original, they had like a gas station that was a business that they would maintain. It would make sense for them to be there. Right. 
But it had the same feeling, but it was just an office, and, and like that didn't make sense. Yeah, they just did. That was the only set they had. Yeah, whatever. It was the trailer <laughs> they had on set. Right. And so they come in there, and there's this woman there, and she's like, oh, well, I'll get you help, you know, I'll call the wrecker or whatever. She's calling people. And Renee Zellweger, I guess, looks at her or whatever, and commenting about her breasts. Yeah, nobody said anything about her breasts. She's like, oh, they're fake. But a phony is a $3 bill, I yeah. believe, is her, her her phrase. But it's the best money I ever spent or whatever. I get my commissions go up. So, yeah, yeah it must be something like real estate or some kind of sales. Uh, but the thing is, is she's wearing not a low-cut shirt mm-hmm. and a blazer over the top of that. Yeah. And she's leaned forward, sitting behind a desk. So in no way can you see her chest. <laughs> like, if that was supposed to be highlighted, costuming and blocking did a really bad oh, yeah. job. Well, yeah, it seemed to come out of absolutely nowhere, too. Because, like you said, I guess maybe Renee Zellweger was supposed to have looked at her, but it, well, that wasn't even conveyed No, that she looked at her chest. I mean, none of it made sense. And then somebody throws a rock through her window? I thought it was a gunshot. Was it a rock? Maybe it was a gunshot. But she said, oh, it's another one of those farmer's wives. That And she's like, like, I'd even be interested. And then she lifts up her shirt and flashes them. But they weren't real boobs. I don't think so. They looked like they were made of rubber. And you know what? I am happy that this woman did not have to show her breasts <laughs> for this movie. Right. Because I would be sad if she had to. <laughs> I'm sad for us for having to watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so she calls the wrecker, which is Vil- Vilmer? Was that yeah, his name? Th- yeah, Vilmer, I guess. It-, it was confusing for a long time, but I believe that's who she's referring to. Yeah. And he shows up to the two boys. Yeah, and he the- pulls up and says, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. The- I'm, I'm Matthew McConaughey from Days to Confused. <laughs> So Man, the, you're some more high school girls, huh? What? Because, you know, he liked high school girls. Oh, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was like the old creepy dude. Yeah. Yeah. Every uh, school's got one. So the one dude's just passed out on the street, and he's like, oh, he's dead. He's like, what are you talking about? He's just, he just talking a second ago. He was just breathing. And then he snaps his neck, and he's like, well, he's dead now. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was actually comical. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think that's about? What are they going to do? Like, is that just so Leatherface has more flesh to play with? Like, because I mean, it's, I don't know why they kill anybody. It. Well, I mean, like, it seemed like he was having fun playing with the girls, and I just, I don't know. I was surprised. I guess maybe he just likes playing with the girls, not the boys. Yeah, I guess <laughs> he just killed them so fast. He's um, all, he's all about playing with the girls, but. <laughs> So, you know, the other dude is smart enough to start running. No, he's not. But He's smart enough to start running, but... But n- not smart enough to run anywhere where the guy's not going to catch him. <laughs> he runs straight down the center of the road right. with woods on either side that that truck could never traverse. Right. And then he weaves back and forth in a serpentine pattern... Down the road. Yeah, it would make sense if they were shooting at him, but they weren't shooting at him. So what the fuck are you doing? Do you think you're dodging his car? Because you're still in the middle of the road. (laughs) You know that car is wider than your body, right? Every comment in the movie Scream was made about this movie. Yeah. Like how stupid people are. I guess we should kind of point out the fact that this movie was made like three years ago. Yeah. It it premiered at, at the South by Southwest Film Festival two years ago in 95. And I guess it had uh, some sort of limited release in, 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 you know, a few theaters around. We didn't see it, obviously, then. Um, they shelved it for a long time. And from what I was reading in one of the, the trades, they the producers wanted to wait until Jerry Maguire was... Uh, released because Renee Zellweger was being it was going to be a l- l- female lead right. in this big Tom Cruise movie. So they were like, "Well, she's going to 
get you know more famous off of this, which people know who she is now, and they really yeah. didn't before. I mean, that was part of why I wanted to see the movie, so that makes sense. She was the blonde girl in Empire Records, and mm-hmm. now she's, uh, you know, Renee Zellweger. So they wanted to wait for that, and so they re-released it now. It's still only in limited cities, I think. But it's here. Like, I read the article in the Lucky paper. Lucky us. Yeah. It's here, so we went and saw it. Um, but yeah, so it's a weird kind of, you know, it's she made this movie, but she made it a while ago. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, yeah, so he gets killed. He gets run over. Yeah, and and that shot went on way too long. He's just going yes, forward and backward and forward and backward. And, and like prior to that, he's like, all right, racing fans. That's not racing. No. That, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. That just really bothered me. There needs in movies. There, whenever anybody makes a joke like that, there needs to be a just like someone outside of the movie that comes into the movie, like just a dude wearing a suit or something like that to walk up to Matthew McConaughey and be like, "That's not racing, actually." And then leave. <laughs> right. So anytime somebody makes a dumb joke like that, that doesn't make any sense. Well, and, like, too, he's, like, talking to him and laughing, and he's like, oh, still kicking. Oh, that'll do it. Like, you have no idea if he's still alive or not. You're just running him over. Right. (laughs) What the fuck? He might be impervious to to trucks. You don't know. I think he was dead a long time before he thought he killed him. Probably. Although, when he throws him in the back of his truck, he, he looks fairly intact. Yeah. Not squished. Yeah, that's true. That's another... Makeup mistake. But so, I'm trying to think what happened. Okay, so they're walking back looking for the wrecker, the three of them. They don't know that her boyfriend's dead. Right. And then Renee Zellweger goes off separate from the other two. Yeah, because the other two go down the road like towards a house. Yeah, and she's like, I'm going to look for the the car and the wrecker, yeah. which is stupid because... If he hadn't been a psycho, he'd just been a regular tow truck driver. Yeah. He would have come along, hooked up the car, and driven off with the car, and assuming the two boys. Yeah. Well, so she's looking around for something that may not be there. And she gets there, and the car is not there. Yeah. And it's like the dark in the country. Like, stay with your friends, you stupid. Right. Although, it didn't turn out very well for her friends either. No. No, they get to, they get to the house. <laughs> Which I guess is the centerpiece of the movie. It looks like the exact same house. They did do that right. I mean, maybe it is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. But there's a brother, and I don't mean a I don't mean a hip black guy. <laughs> I mean the brother of Matthew McConaughey's character. Mm-hmm. We later find out who has a shotgun. He accosts the young man and just starts quoting lines from different people. Which he does throughout the entire movie. Mm-hmm. It's William Shakespeare. It's Voltaire. You know, com- common sense is is no longer common. You know, yeah. Voltaire. He's a big fan of the Age of Enlightenment, I guess. Uh, I you know I I don't uh, I don't understand it, but I guess that tells us he's well read. Yeah, I mean, like I think that's what he's trying to make sure people understand that he's not stupid and that he's well read, but he still seems stupid anyway. He might just have like a was that rosettes or something like that quotations that book of quotations, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> yeah, it was his uh you know quote of the day calendar, right? Um, <laughs> and while they're having their little scene, the girl's sitting on the same fucking porch swing from the nineteen seventies movie. And Leatherface is behind her, like... Playing with her hair. Yeah, like, I don't understand. You see, he, like, he looks like, uh, it's like one of those, one of those things, like, on Halloween. Like a little spooky decoration. Yeah, it was weird. But she keeps swatting at her hair because she thinks it's a bug or whatever, but it's actually, you know, Leatherface. And then yeah, she sees him and screams, and he screams back, just like the original. Mm-hmm. And she runs away into the house. Stupid. And he attacks her, like, in the original. It was an exact duplicate, almost. He puts her into the stand-up freezer thing. (laughs) But she keeps popping back out. She is alive. She is intact. Like, he's putting you in a box to save you for later. You stay down and wait for him to leave. Yep. 
what an idiot. But she just kept trying to get away. It's like, yeah. he's not hurting you right now. Shut up. And then he hangs her on a hook, <sighs> like in the original. <sighs> Although less creepy than in the original. Yeah. Because you kind of, you don't even see it go into her back. No. You, it, you see the hook, you see her, it kind of cuts away. And then, yeah, that's it. She's just dangling. Yeah, know? this movie didn't seem to want to traumatize us as much as the first oh, movie. Oh, no, no, no. It's nowhere near <laughs> as brutal. So that part, at least, was good. Um, and it's not scary in any way. No. <laughs> um, it's upset. I mean, like, tw- okay, I'll be honest. Towards the end, I was getting a little freaked out. Because of just how, oh, you were getting, like, scared? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> just a little. I, I think it was, that it's... Like, cruel, the way they're treating these people. Mm. But, I mean, yeah, I'm a little, I was a little upset based on that, but not in any way scared. Um, so, yeah, later, that same character that was hung up on the hook, it's the last we see of her, until she's just on the road. Right, yeah, how in the fuck did that happen? Just crawling on the road with no explanation of how she got off the hook, how she got on the road. She's got a wound in her back. Doesn't even look that bad, but she was just on a hook. Yeah. Like, she should have a punctured lung, punctured ribs. Like, there should be some serious... I mean, granted, she is only crawling on the ground, but... How did she even get down? Like, are we supposed to believe that she pulled herself off? Because I don't think that's humanly possible. No, I mean, you you know, if you're a teenage boy, you know, they do that all the time. Pull themselves off. But. Oh, God. Come on. Gross. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Zellweger finds the wrecker. Yeah, and she's asking where her boyfriend is, and he's just saying, get in the damn car, get in the damn car. He's like, I know where he is. Get in the car. Yeah, and uh, I would not have gotten in the fucking car. No, but she does. But, like, some dude is driving down the road, says he knows exactly where your boyfriend is, but doesn't tell you where, and just keeps telling you get in the car. You're not getting in the fucking car. You no shouldn't. no woman would do that. Right. But she does, and he's, like, in the back yeah. with the other guy <clears throat> that he killed, just, you know, stacked up like cordwood. <laughs> yeah, and so, like, she starts getting scared. Just like, oh, by the way, her boyfriend, when he's running from the truck, said, Mr., you're starting to scare me. And he's like, you know, whatever, like laughing at him. That was as good as he delivered that line, too. Yeah. And so then she's like, I'm getting scared. Let me out. And it's like, yeah, obviously, he's trying to scare you people. He doesn't care that he's scaring you. Right. And so then he's like, oh, I was going to kill you, but I'm I'm frightening you. I'm sorry. (laughs) Right. And he's like, oh, you don't know, scared. Right. So then she is begging him to stop the car, and somehow they agree that if he stops the car, she'll look in the back, because he's trying to make her look in the back. Mm -hmm. That's when she sees the bodies, yeah. And instead of, at that point, opening the door and running, she waits till the car's moving again. And then she jumps up. What the fuck, lady? (laughs) The acting in this movie, top to bottom, is awful. (laughs) Including Renee Zellweger. It's pretty bad. I mean, it, the only one that's doing anything is Matthew McConaughey. I don't know. I mean, she, she does okay towards the end. Maybe in, in the beginning, maybe I think in certain scenes. Yeah. In the beginning, I think her her performance is pretty flat. But towards the end, when she's supposed to be really, really scared, she does a good job of really, really scared. Okay. I don't think she did a good enough job of scared in the beginning, though. I don't think she does a good enough job with any of the line reads. Matthew McConaughey does a great job with being crazy. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's chewing up scenery, for sure. <laughs> but so she runs to the uh, fake-breasted real estate agent, Renee Zellweger. She does? I don't yeah. remember that part. Yeah, for, for protection. She's like, oh, come in, you know, and everything. And then it's revealed she's in on it. And that's when she... Oh, you're missing a part, though. She did run into the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah, Like, she was a little bit smarter. <laughs> she ran into True. the woods. And, and Matthew McConaughey was like, oh, is that how you want to play it? And, you know, he's like, whatever. You know, everybody makes their choices. Like, he knows something bad's going to happen in there. 
And then Leatherface, who was just in the house fucking with Heather, is now in the woods going after her. Yeah. Which makes no damn sense. No, it doesn't. It's really frustrating. So, yeah. So then when she was actually running from Leatherface when she gets to the realtor lady. Yeah. And then the realtor lady, the the brother that quotes uh, all the people, he comes and ties her up, throws her in the trunk of the woman's car. And he's using a cattle prod to shock her. And the woman's like, I'm going to go get pizzas for everybody. Like, what in the fuck? At a drive through pizza place. Yeah, does that exist? Not around here. I've never heard of that. But I guess in Texas. <laughs> I don't know. And then there's this whole scene where there's a cop behind them, and he's like, what's in the trunk? Because she's kicking and screaming. Yeah. And the, the, the guy at the fast food place or whatever, the pizza place, is like, well, who's in the trunk? No, what's in the trunk? And she says, oh, I've got somebody tied up back there. He's like, oh, really? Can no, I who, see? Who? Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah, come on out. I'll show you. And she pops the trunk. Like, what the fuck is going on? And the cop doesn't... Nothing comes of that. Yeah, it's like... And it's supposed to give you some kind of tension. There's no tension. No. Was it, is it like... Eh. I thought maybe they were going to imply the entire town's in on it. But then that yeah. isn't, that isn't the case. It's just everybody's dumb. I guess it's just to imply that everyone's stupid in this town. And there's this weird thing between her and the realtor lady where, like, the realtor lady's trying to act like she's her friend while well, at the same time not. All right. You know? So she's like, I can't breathe. So she pokes a hole in the bag for her so she can breathe. And then, mm-hmm. like, there's other times throughout where she's like, oh, he's not so bad. And, like, trying to calm her down and right. comfort her. And it's like, it's it, it just adds a whole other layer of fucked up itness. There's stuff that was never written or filmed or was cut out of this movie. Didn't they cut some shit out of it from the original release? I have no idea. Maybe maybe they cut out some shit that made it make sense. Maybe. I don't know. Because at one point, she's like, um, well, um, we'll get to it. But they get to the They bring her back to the house so they can have the dinner scene. You know, the same dinner scene that they had before. Basically, yeah. And Except they're eating pizza. So then they're getting ready. Renee Zellweger's getting ready with this real estate lady. And she says, okay, let me explain what's going on here. And you think like, okay, we're going to get some clarity on the plot, right? No. She says, you know how everyone says that there's a cabal of faceless, nameless people that run the entire world. There's like a handful of them and they control all the government agencies and it's the new world order stuff. Well, they exist and Matthew McConaughey works for them. So ridiculous. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, of course, this is what he says. He's mm-hmm. fucking insane. Well, and, and he's got her, you know, believing his bullshit. Right. Like she says that he has a chip in her head that can blow her head up. Right. She and actually that, believes that. That's why she won't go away. So Renee Zellweger, at, when they're having this dinner, is like, and it's revealed that the reason she's there is because Leatherface is sick of that face and wants her face, like you pointed out. And she's like, this is stupid. This is bullshit. You're pathetic. All of you. There, There's no government agency or whatever. It's all lies. No one fucking believes you except for your idiot girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And then a limo shows <laughs> And it makes me so mad. I liked this, actually. Really? The fact that he's like... the fa- Okay, so t- bear with me. Okay. They introduced the idea that he works for some fucking shadow government organization or whatever, right? These cabal of people that are, that are running everything. The fact that that wasn't just him being insane, but that was actually true is the only interesting decision this script makes, in my opinion. You could have done something with that to to make it interesting. Now, they didn't. They didn't make it interesting in any way. They hinted a lot of weird things that are never followed up on or anything. Like, are they trying to to entice me to want more of these movies? Because I don't. No. Um... But, like, 
It's an interesting idea. They just don't do anything with it. Well, okay. The the evil cabal dude yeah. says to him, the only reason you're here is to show these people what horror is, which seemed almost like a meta kind of line, like he's talking right. about the audience. Right, which I, I wanted to shout at the screen, they're failing because <laughs> this isn't horror. And then he undoes his shirt. Yeah. And it reminds me of something from Hellraiser. Yes. Like, he's got all these weird... Runes, like, yeah. tattooed. And you only see, like, a hint of it. And hooks. He's got, like, a hook on his belly button and everything, right? Yes. But, to me, all that stuff's interesting. But they don't do anything with it. No, he just goes over and licks her face. Licks yeah. Renee Zellweger's face all over and leaves. And then leaves, yeah. And, like, the one thing that, that the first movie did not have, which I actually appreciated with the brutality, was there was no sexual element. This movie, they're like, well, we have to give it some sex. So he licks her face and... At one point, he makes out with the the one girl. And then he bites off part of her face. Her nose. She gets lit on fire later, and then her head gets crushed when he steps on it. Yeah. And there was, like, a scene where him and his girlfriend, the crazy realtor lady, are, like, making out and stuff. It's like, we didn't need sex in this movie. No, not at all. So, yeah. And, I mean, there's always kind of, like, this um, undertone of, like, I'm going to rape you kind of vibe. Yes, yes. But and I, not really followed through. And I didn't like any of it. Yeah. None of that worked for me at all. Like I said, the weird cabal, like, in this universe, there really is a handful of people that control all the governments and stuff like that. That's interesting. Like, think about, like, okay, so you were talking about, like, you know, you're supposed to be showing them horror or whatever. That would almost be a better idea for a movie where it's like a group of people that want to recreate horror movies or like keep, you know, have people be terrified or whatever, or like, you know, this is what gives life its meaning or, or something like that. They need to be satisfied. So these people put on, you know, this thing and terrorize these people and maybe one can live or whatever. Like the cliches of a horror movie, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of an interesting idea for for a horror movie. They didn't do that, but that's kind of an interesting idea. I guess. I mean, like, I get what you're saying. I guess I'm more interested in a villain that would be more psychological. So, like, rather than believing there's some evil cabal out there, like, I want to think it's just Matthew McConaughey using that as manipulation because he's an abusive bastard to this woman. <laughs> I mean, that, and, that could be interesting, too, but they don't do that either. No. No. And they do something that's just completely unbelievable. So then she gets away. And somebody driving a plane, for some reason, <laughs> decides to help her as Matthew McConaughey is chasing her and hits him in the head with his plane. Apparently causes no damage to his plane or anything whatsoever to hit a human being going that... Maybe he is a human being. I don't know. He's not a human being. Because his blood is blue. Yeah, that's that's what we need to talk about. Like, back it up for a second. They call him a cripple at one point in the movie. He's got this, like, weird device on his leg, which is how she even got away in the first place. Yeah, it's like his legs... Like, I don't... In order for it's like bionic. In order for him to be able to move, it's like a weird contraption that moves his leg for him. It's got a remote control though. Yeah. I don't understand. And he's not operating the remote control ever. At one point his girlfriend is, and at one point Renee Zellweger is, but not him. But it makes yeah, it makes no sense. Like it's not like he's holding it and then he takes a step and then has to push a button to move his leg and then like, he's got to keep doing that, like, step, push, step, push, no. step, push. It's just, it's only there to incapacitate him when it's necessary <laughs> for the movie. Right. It's ridiculous. So, you know, at first it's like, okay, so that's weird. But then when he gets hit, yeah, there's blue fucking blood on the ground. Yeah, and I, what's the implication of that? So he's supposed to be what, like a lizard person or an alien? Or? Well, she said, she, the woman said she believes he comes from outer space. Well, I guess he does. Oh, and also, the the guy, Rothman, I think is his character's name, the weird 
you know, got manipulated, the cabal guy. Mm. He's like, I don't know why you hang around this cripple, like you were saying. Uh. And she goes, you know, she know damn well why I have to be here or whatever. At one point she says she could go back to her husband, and she's like, you know, you know damn well why I have to be here. We don't. Yeah, that's true. What the true. fuck is going on? Well, I like, guess... I guess we should believe the thing about the chip in her head now because they're, they exist. He's an alien. Like, I guess there really is a chip in her head. Here's the thing. I've seen the first movie, which is a really good movie. It's brutal. It's a very hard watch, but it's a good movie. I've never seen the other two. There's two other uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. So second one, third one. Yeah, I haven't seen them either. I'm pretty sure they're just, they're kind of like Friday the 13th where they're just, they're just essentially the same movie mm-hmm. just with different horny teenagers. <laughs> but I don't I don't know because I haven't seen them. So I don't know if any of this is covered in those. So if you're screaming at your device, <laughs> right? your tape, whatever you're listening to right now, that all that's covered in one of those movies, we haven't seen them. Right. Yeah. Feel free to write us, latefee1994 at right. aol.com, and please explain some shit. But anyway, so uh, then the, the plane comes for some reason. Well, she gets two people in an RV help her out. Who are drinking Bloody Marys. Yeah. Well, driving. And calling each other uh, Mrs. whatever the last name is. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Pe- whatever. Pistol Grass. Mr. Pistol Grass. Uh, yeah, it's weird. They crash. We don't know what happens to those two. Presumably I'm assuming they're, they're dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Renee Zellweger gets out. She runs. The plane hits the dude, kills him. And but the rest of them are still running after her. Yeah. Well, there's only one rest of them at this point, and that's uh, Leatherface. Leatherface. Then the, the limo appears, and she willingly gets into it. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, she thinks she's saved. Did she not pay attention? Like, where has she been? She gets in the limo with the creepy ass right. guy from you know. She's like a the limo. Oh, earlier. Michael Douglas from Wall Street's here to save. <laughs> but weirdly he he t- he asks her if she wants to go to the hospital or the police station and actually takes her yeah he says i'm sorry what, what happened there was appalling or whatever or like shouldn't have been the case or i don't know takes i don't her. understand there's a cop he's like oh this has happened before it's like yeah we understand that this is the next generation <laughs> and then jordy says uh oh, captain mccard says number one right we know this has happened before. Stop letting the face. Um, this is what irritates me about this whole plot line, though, is like, it doesn't make any sense. And then, so I guess she's in a hospital? Yeah. Looks like a, it. But there's a cop there? Well, the cop probably came to the hospital. That part does not bother me. Then the blonde woman that, that escapes from the first movie is rolled past her in a gurney. And they look, lock eyes, and the, the, the police is like, you know her? That's it. It's over. What the fuck was that about? Don't know. Why is she still in the hospital? One of my friends told me in the third one, it said they, they said that she killed herself or whatever. She's like in a catatonic state or whatever, but she killed herself. Hmm. That character. Okay. So I don't know. Are those Maybe those movies aren't in continuity with this. I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. I hate it. I hate this movie. It makes me angry. It was one of the worst pieces of shit I've ever seen. The acting was awful. The script was awful. It was an hour and 30 minutes long, I think. Not even. And that was the best thing about it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it did manage to make me a little creeped out. Just, I'm easily creeped out. Yeah, not me. But it was still a bad movie. Oh. Very bad movie. If they had awards for terrible movies, (laughs) this would win all of them. And to me, it's so funny because what upsets me most about the movie is what you like most about the movie. Interesting. You know, the... I I didn't... Okay. Like it. Like it is very strong. (laughs) It's the only idea that to me is interesting. They they came with the idea of like, let's say we, we, we tell everyone that he thinks he's fucking, you know, whatever, working for these people that control these one world government or whatever. But then it's actually true. That's the only interesting idea in the movie to me. Because the rest of it is like, let's remake the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but worse. Yeah. We'll see, but what makes it scary to me is that it's people doing this. 
Well, that's that's another thing about the first movie is the scariest thing about that movie isn't Leatherface. It's all the quote unquote regular people around him right. allowing him to do this. You're right about that. That is the creepiest part of that movie. So you take that away because now they're aliens and an evil cabal and, you know, all that stuff. It's like, what but the at fuck? Least, at least, like, divorced from the first movie. Because to me, this is its own thing. That might be interesting. It has a potential to be interesting. You could rework it. It doesn't have to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just some fictional thing. But uh, you could rework it to make it interesting. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, that's all I they got. They didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, if anyone could could ask the question: Did they do anything interesting or good? They didn't. No. no. But that is the episode, Carol. Don't don't see this movie. No, of course not. We do, we don't recommend it. You've listened to us talk about it long enough. You don't need to waste more of your life on it. No. So um, you can write us, like I said, LateFee1994 at AWOL.com. Mm-hmm. Check out our website, www.RetroLateFee.com. Yes. Share the tapes with your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.